no, I, it, seemed, it remains absolutely unthinkable. Um, this is, without doubt, the greatest catastrophe and the greatest idiocy that Britain has perpetrated since the invasion of Suez. To me, it's a disaster, self-inflicted. Mm -hmm. Nobody's to blame but the Brits themselves, not the Irish, not the Europeans. We are absolutely, as a nation, integrated. We are with the heart of Europe. We're, we've always been with the heart of Europe. Now, we would quarrel and fight each other and that stuff, but we are Europeans. And the idea to me that at the moment we should imagine we can substitute access to the biggest trade union in the world with access to the American market is terrifying. I, I think Trump's whim, Trump's uh, um, instability as a president, his, his uh, egomaniacal decisions, um, for us to be at the mercy of that instead of busy members of the European Union is insane. Um, and, and it's uh, fickle and terrifying and it endangers us. I don't like it politically, I don't believe in it economically, and I don't understand it. I don't really understand still how we got to this situation where we have this Mickey Mouse cabinet of second-rate people. We have a foreign secretary, whom I particularly despise. I've never met these people, but he, he's somebody who is driven by the writings of Ayn Rand and people of that sort and has produced second-rate papers of mm -hmm. political importance and is a very poor negotiator and a very stupid man. Um, sorry, that, but that is where I stand on this situation. And I... It, it's true for me, in my, in my passage through life, I've become increasingly radical, if you like. Um, I've become increasingly anti-war, uh, desperately concerned about the ecology and climate change. And I have, for heaven's sake, uh, I think 14 grandchildren and three great-grandsons already. And their lives are endangered, but the greater life of, of civilization is endangered. The globe will be all right. The globe will save itself, mm -hmm. but people won't be all right. Yeah. Um, so, incidentally, you mentioned Smiley at the end of Legacy of Spies. It is interesting to me now, retrospectively, that Smiley, as far as we know, has finished his life in Germany. That's where we find him at the end of Legacy of Spies. In this story, it's all about exfiltrating somebody away from the British, from the British. The British arms, uh, the, the British embrace. It's terribly hard to be a Brit at the moment, and a European. Um, the demonization of Europe by this whole awful British press uh, seems unstoppable. You have to remember that 80% more of the British press and the British media is owned by offshore oligarchs. Um, some live in the Channel Islands, I wonder why, uh, others have huge offshore interests. Who profits from Brexit? That's what I don't understand. I can't. Who actually is hoping to make money out of Brexit? Uh, that I don't understand. I don't understand where this impulse came from. Of course, uh, if you're offshore and you can bet against the pound, bet against sterling, if you're uh, a hedge fund manager, and you can see the, wind, the way the wind is blowing, you make huge amounts of money. Is this what drives these press oligarchs? Is that what makes them act like this? They have raised, the, the right-wing press in Britain has raised Johnson to the level of a new Winston Churchill. Johnson wrote an appalling book about Winston Churchill. It was a self-glorification, really, of Johnson. We really must remember we're dealing with second-rate people here, starting with Johnson. I think it's really important that Europeans understand that. This is not our first 11, this is our third 11. Um, 
How did I get there? <laughs> <laughs> I'm just cross. <laughs>